Hi everyone. It is still October 5, 2018. If you want to uh, just quickly take a look at the video that I posted right before this one on all of the mosquitoes, the ticks, the flea-borne illnesses dramatically rising, I absolutely believe that it is being unleashed deliberately upon us, not just Americans, but people all over the world. And for those who are really kind of so excited that there are going to be arrests, you know, that Q says, the arrests are coming soon, the arrests, don't worry, if they're coming, be patient, they're coming, they're coming. I believe they've been saying that for a year. But if that's your focus, I just want to tell you that all of the agendas are proceeding very nicely. Some have accelerated, but depopulation continues. Agenda 2030 continues. The climate change, global warming, agenda continues. Weather war is continuing. So, while you know, so many who are quote-unquote awake are so excited about Trump and he's going to, I don't know, bring back the country that we once lived in, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And this depopulation agenda, the unleashing of an awful lot of insects that our military has been studying for a very long time, decades. They have their bio labs in which they are injecting insects with an awful lot of the diseases that are on the rise. Well, I don't hear Trump talking about that. Nor do I hear him talking about vaccines. Now, he campaigned on that, right? He was going to be creating that vaccine safety commission. And nothing, nothing has come of that. So, I am sorry to tell you that everything is just proceeding uh, without stop and it will continue. Now, uh, these two articles I will link to below <clears throat> and what I'm going to be reading, some of the information I knew already, a lot of it I didn't and I don't think a lot do know. And we can thank this journalist right here this story was first exposed to English-speaking audiences on September 12th by investigative journalist Dil Dilyana, and I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your last name, uh, who was previously unjustly terminated from her position at the Bulgarian True Daily for exposing Azerbaijan's uh, support for terrorists reporting that 350 Azerbaijani diplomatic flights carrying weapons for terrorists in Syria. The Russian Federation has followed up on her rigorous reporting regarding the uh, Tbilisi biological weapons scandal and determined that her findings were accurate. Okay, I'm not going to read much of this article, but there is a bio lab in Georgia. And, well, this is what's happening around that area. Locals complain of constant headaches, nausea, high blood pressure, and dizziness when chemicals are being burnt at night in the laboratory, which is just a couple of hundred meters from their homes. There is smoke, black, red, green at night, 
or especially early in the morning at around 3 or 4 a.m. Even the hens have died. They put a big pipe or underground and connected it to the drains. This smell comes from there. It smells like rotten eggs and decaying hay. The smell is so bad and is spread in different directions by the wind. One person said, once I woke up early in the morning and noticed violet smoke coming from the laboratory. At nighttime, excuse me, <clears throat> at nighttime, they let the smoke out so that people don't see. Why at night? What are they hiding from us? He asks, and then provides another worrying fact. There are big blue plastic pipes along the street from the laboratory and from where everything goes to the river, which is three to four kilometers away. Not only do they pollute our air, they're poisoning our water. And you wonder why there are countries around the world that chant death to America. You know, when you don't face the evil that your own commit, that evil really takes over, begins to spread, and becomes very, very obvious to the point where it's out of control. Bringing it back into control would absolutely require the world's people immediately waking up and getting out running and demanding all of this stop. Neighbors recall a tragic incident involving four Filipinos who worked at the Luger Center. Two of the foreigners died of an alleged gas poisoning in their rented flat. The first time when they called the emergency service, we were told that they had food poisoning from fish. But the second time when the ambulance came, there was foam coming out of their mouths. They were shouting, help, help. When they passed away, they took them away and covered it all up. It all happened here. Um, and a foreign scientist died. So leaked documents revealed that the U.S. Embassy to Tbilisi transports pathogens as well as frozen human blood as diplomatic cargo. Diplomatic cargo shipments are exempt from inspection and taxes. The Pentagon's Defense Threat Reduction Agency. What is that? Well, I will link below to this um, government site for Cooperative Threat Reduction Integrating Contract. You can take a look at all of the information posted right here on the internet and how they fund bio labs, private contractors, the Pentagon bioweapons. So the U.S. Army regularly produces deadly wet viruses, bacteria, and toxins in direct violation of the United Nations Convention on the Prohibition of Biological Weapons. Hundreds of thousands of unwitting people are systematically exposed to dangerous pathogens and other incurable diseases. Biowarfare scientists use, use diplomatic cover uh, to test man-made viruses at Pentagon bio laboratories in 25 countries across the world. This is the biolab map. And you notice it doesn't have the United States. Well, we have an awful lot of labs here in the United States. But these U.S. bio laboratories are funded by the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, funded by the tune of $2.1 billion. Uh, that's quite a lot of money for this military program, Cooperative Biological Engagement Program, 
and they are located in former Soviet Union countries such as Georgia, Ukraine, as well as the Middle East, Southeast Asia, and Africa. The Luker Center is the Pentagon Bio Laboratory in Georgia. It is located just um, 17 kilometers from a U.S. military air base in the capital, Tbilisi. Tasked with the military program are biologists from the U.S. Army Medical Research Unit, Georgia, along with private contractors. The Biosafety Level 3 laboratory is accessible only to U.S. citizens with security clearance. They are accorded diplomatic immunity. Well, how did that come about? Through the 2002 U.S.-Georgia Agreement on Defense Cooperation. Georgia said, fine, come on over here, do whatever the hell you want, and all of the contractors will have immunity. Information obtained from the U.S. Federal Contracts Registry uh, clarify some of the military activities at the Luker Center, among them research on bioagents, anthrax, and tularemia. Oh, well, I just spoke of that in my last video. A man, 68 years old, I believe, <clears throat> contracted tularemia from his cat that I think in that video I forgot to mention died. His cat died. His vet said it was feline leukemia. However, the vet never took any tests to determine if it was feline leukemia. His doctor believes his cat died from tularemia. And I will say that if there are more cases of tularemia, we may not hear of them. They may be keeping this very quiet. They may be calling it something else, like the cat dying. Oh, feline leukemia. Defense threat reduction. Agency has outsourced much of the work under the military program to private companies, which are not held accountable to Congress, and which can operate more freely and move around the rule of law. U.S. civilian personnel performing work at the Luker Center have also been given diplomatic immunity, although they are not diplomats. Private companies can perform work under diplomatic cover for the U.S. government without being under the direct control of the host state, in this case, the Republic of Georgia. This practice is often used by the CIA to provide cover for its agents. Three private American companies, CH2M Hill, Battelle, Metabiota, um, and in addition to working for the Pentagon, these private contractors perform research for the CIA and various other government agencies. There is a huge web in the world working on our New World Order, whether it's depopulation, Agenda 2030, climate change, global warming, all of the agendas funded massively by either the Pentagon, the CIA, or Rothschild, Rockefeller, and it once you look into the web, how extraordinary it is to see all of these organizations and private companies, NGOs and nonprofits, all working, thinking, no doubt, many of them thinking that they're doing good but they're all being, you know, the strings, 
They're all puppets. They're all the useful idiots of the deep state. Battelle has a $59 million contract. It's a subcontractor at Luger Center. Has extensive experience in research on bioagents, as the company has already worked on the U.S. bioweapons program under 11 previous contracts with the U.S. Army from 1952 to 1966. The private company performs work for the Pentagon's uh, Defense Threat Reduction Agency Biolaboratories in Afghanistan, Armenia, Georgia, Uganda, Tanzania, Iraq, Afghanistan, Vietnam. Patel conducts research, development, testing, and evaluation using both highly toxic chemicals and highly pathogenic biological agents for a wide range of U.S. government agencies. And once I get into this, this one article here, you will begin to think, hmm, all of that aerosol spraying. Okay, enough said. CIA, Battelle, Project Clear Vision. Uh, the Battelle and the CIA um, reconstructed and tested a Soviet-era anthrax bomblet in order to test its dissemination dissemination characteristics. Top secret experiments, Patel has operated a top secret biolaboratory national bio defense analysis and countermeasure center at Fort Detrick, Maryland under a US Department of Homeland Security contract for the last decade. They were awarded quite a lot of money Amongst the secret experiments performed by Patel are assessment of powder dissemination technology, assessment of hazard posed by aerosolized toxins, and assessment of virulence of a particular um, bacteria, B. pseudomalia. Meli meliodosis, I don't know, as a function of aerosol particle in non-human primates. This has the potential to be developed as a biological weapon. It is classified as a Category B bioterrorism agent, and it was studied by the U.S. as a potential bioweapon in the past. Battelle has already produced bioterrorism agents at the biosafety level four top secret laboratory at Fort Detrick in the United States. Uh, among the 16 research priorities for the lab, they were amongst them, I'm sorry, they were characterize classical, emerging, and genetically engineered pathogens for their BTA, biological threat agent, potential. Assess the nature of non-traditional, novel, and non-endemic induction of disease from potential biological threat agent and to expand aerosol challenge testing capacity for non-human primates. Well, they tested on non-human primates because they began to actually use it on human primates. Metabiota also gets an awful lot of money from our Pentagon. Um, and their services include Global Field-Based Biological Threat Research, Pathogen Discovery, Outbreak Response, and Clinical Trials. Metabiota had been contracted by the Pentagon to perform work 
for the Defense Threat Reduction Agency before and during the Ebola crisis in West Africa and was awarded 3.1 million throughout the years of 2012 and 2015 for work in Sierra Leone, one of the countries at the epicenter of the Ebola outbreak. And you know what? I can't stand seeing pictures of these guys. I'm so happy I'm gonna make I'm gonna make millions and millions and millions of dollars because my company is producing biological agents that are gonna kill an awful lot of people. Yay! <laughs> July 17, 2014 report drafted by the Viral Hemorrhagic Fever Consortium accused Metabiota of failing to abide by an existing agreement on how to report test results and for bypassing the Sierra Leonean, Leonean scientists working there. The report also raised the possibility that Metabiota was culturing blood cells at the lab, something the report said was dangerous, as well as misdiagnosing healthy patients. And of course, all of these allegations were denied. Um, entomological warfare, entomological warfare is a type of biological warfare that uses insects insects to transmit diseases the pentagon has allegedly performed such entomological tests in georgia and russia in 2014 the luger center was equipped with the insect facility and launched a project raising awareness about barcoding of sand flies. So in 2014, 2015, the, this particular sand fly species were collected under another project, surveillance work on acute febrile illness. And all female sand flies were tested to determine their infectivity rate. A third project, also including sand flies, collection studied the characteristics of their salivary glands. As a result, Tbilisi has been infested with biting flies since 2015. These biting insects live indoors in bathrooms all year long, which was not the typical behavior of these species. In Georgia, uh, Normally, the fly season is exceptionally short from June to September. Well, now it's year long. Local people complain of being bitten by these newly appeared flies while naked in their bathrooms. They also have a strong resistance to cold and can survive even in the sub-zero temperatures in the mountains. So, I have heard from a lot in the comment section a lot of you saying you are seeing insects that you've never seen before. How about all of those really, really tiny, tiny, tiny mosquitoes that were um, infesting areas of Southern California? How about those giant mosquitoes in North Carolina? And I have seen so many different bizarre looking insects. I don't even know what to make of them. Um, so, not only in Georgia, neighboring Russia, according to local people, they bite and cause rashes. Their breeding habitats are house drains. All right, I am having a real problem with a very tiny, it almost looks like a fruit fly or behaves like a fruit fly. But the only time that I ever got fruit flies were 
bananas when they began to ripen a bit too much. These fruit flies are all over and I actually saw them coming out of my sink, the drain. Anybody else experiencing that? 1967 U.S. Army Report Anthropods of Medical Importance in Asia and the European USSR lists all local insects, their distribution, and the diseases that they carry. Fighting flies, which live in drains, are also listed in the document. The natural habitats, though, are the Philippines, not Georgia or Russia. Operation White Coat, infected flies tested to bite humans, 1970 and 1972. Sand fly fever tests were performed on humans. Uh, U.S. Army activities in the U.S. Biological Warfare Programs, 1977. It was a declassified U.S. Army report. Operation White Coat was a biodefense medical research program carried out by the U.S. Army at Fort Detrick, Maryland between 1954 and 1973. Wow, they've been on it and they got on it early. And now so many people are sick from mosquitoes and ticks and fleas. But Eastern equine encephalitis. I have noticed that that is another wow rising disease. And I don't remember, it was not on my radar, certainly, this equine encephalitis. But now, over the years, there is an awful lot of horses infected with this. But, uh, Despite the official termination of the U.S. bioweapons program in 1982, official termination, they never terminated anything. The USA or USM RID performed an experiment if sand flies and mosquitoes could be vectors of Rift Valley virus, dengue, chikungunya, and eastern equine encephalitis viruses, which the U.S. Army researched for their potential as bioweapons, killer insects. The Pentagon has a long history in using insects as vectors for diseases. According to a partially declassified 1981 U.S. Army report, American biowarfare scientists carried out a number of experiments on insects. These operations were part of the U.S. entomological warfare under the program for biological weapons. The Pentagon had to kill 625,000 people for just 29 cents per death. A U.S. Army report, 1981, compared two scenarios, 16 simultaneous attacks on a city by, wow, that mosquito. That is the mosquito that mainstream media was reporting on, was it the mosquitoes that were infesting California? Sorry, can't remember. But these mosquitoes infected with yellow fever and, huh, tularemia. Aerosol attack. And, um, assesses their effectiveness in cost and casualties. 69 cents per death for 625,000 deaths. Operation Big Itch. Field tests were performed to determine coverage patterns and survivability of the tropical rat flea. Operation Big Buzz. One million of these mosquitoes um, a Dupi, I don't know, were produced, one million produced, one third were placed in munitions and dropped from aircraft or dispersed on the ground. The mosquitoes survived the airdrop 
and actively sought out human blood. Wow. So think about all of those mosquitoes now, uh, particularly in North Carolina. They're aggressive. They're big. And they're claiming it was Florence that created them. Operation May Day. Uh, these mosquitoes were dispersed through ground-based methods in Georgia, USA, during a U.S. Army operation codenamed May Day. That's Georgia, you know, next to South Carolina. 1981, Army report, mass production of this particular type of mosquito. Uh, they have not been declassified, potentially meaning that the project is still ongoing. And this is the mosquito known as yellow fever mosquito. They have been widely used in U.S. military operations. The same species of mosquitoes are alleged to be the vectors of dengue, chikungunya, Zika virus. Operation Bellwether, U.S. Army Chemical Research and Development Command, Biological Weapons Branch, studied outdoor mosquito biting activity in a number of field tests at Dugway, Proving Ground, Utah, in 1960. Virgin female mosquitoes, which had been starved, were tested upon troops in the open air. You think your government well, I know you guys don't, but how could an American think that their government is going to save and protect them? Our government has <laughs> proven itself over and over and over and over and over and over and over again that it is a killing machine and it has tested on and still testing on Americans and people all over the world military experiments with tropical mosquitoes and ticks in Georgia. Uh, viruses, this is the project, viruses and other arboviruses in Georgia. In 2014, the never before seen tropical mosquito was detected for the first time. And after decades, 60 years, the existence of this mosquito was confirmed in West Georgia, not the one next to South Carolina, the one next to Russia. Tropical mosquitoes, never been seen before in Georgia, were also detected in neighboring Russia and Turkey. Their spread is unusual for this part of the world. Mosquitoes have been distributed only in Georgia, southern Russia, and northern Turkey. They were detected for the first time in 2014 after the start of the Pentagon program at the Luger Center. Another project, Epidemiology and Ecology of Tullamaria in Georgia, 2013 through 2016. 6,148 ground ticks were collected. 5,871 were collected off the cattle and 1,310 fleas, 731 ticks, were caught. Now, if you're testing, why do you need so many ticks, fleas? Because you're going to be infecting them with viruses and then releasing them. In your field experiments, in 2016, a further 21,590 ticks were collected and studied. 2007, Georgia ended its policy of having compulsory annual livestock anthrax vaccination. As a result, the morbidity rate of the disease reached its peak in 2013. The same year, NATO started human-based anthrax vaccine tests at the Luger Center in Georgia. Anthrax is one of the bioagents weaponized by the U.S. Army in the past, despite the Pentagon's claim that its 
program is only defensive, there are facts to the contrary. Um, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever is caused by infection through a tick-borne virus. The disease was first characterized in Crimea in 1944, then later recognized in 1969 as the cause of illness in Congo, hence the name Crimean Congo, uh, thus resulting in the current name. Okay, in 2014, 34 people became infected. One was a four-year-old child with this hemorrhagic fever. Three died. The same year, Pentagon biologists studied the virus in Georgia under this um, Defense Threat Reduction Agency project, epidemiology, of fir um, febrile illnesses caused by dengue viruses and arboviruses in Georgia. The cause of the outbreak in Georgia is still unknown. Only one tick from all of the collected species from the infected villages tested positive. The lack of infected ticks in animals is inexplicable given the sharp increase of human cases in 2014, meaning that the outbreak was not natural and the virus was spread intentionally. This is how our U.S. military tests they test on human subjects. So there were other projects, uh, 21,590 ticks collected for DNA database for future studies at the Lucre Center. Um, military Biolab blamed for deadly Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever outbreak in Afghanistan, 237 cases also reported across Afghanistan, four, uh, 41 were fatal as of December 2017. Most of the cases have been registered in the capital, Kabul, where 71 cases have been reported with 13 fatalities, fatalities. And the province of Haret, near the border with Iran, 67 cases. The project in Afghanistan is part of the U.S. Biodefense Program, Cooperative Biological Engagement Program. Pentagon contractors in Afghanistan and Georgia are the same, and so are the diseases which are spreading among the local population in both countries. Pentagon collects and studies bats. Bats are allegedly the reservoir hosts to the Ebola virus, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and other deadly diseases. Numerous studies have been performed under the Defense Threat Reduction Agency Cooperative Biological Engagement Program in a search for deadly pathogens of military importance in bats. Bats have been blamed for the deadly Ebola outbreak in Africa 2014 to 2016. No conclusive evidence of exactly how the virus jumped to humans has ever been provided, which raises suspicions of intentional and not natural infection. Engineering deadly viruses is legal in the U.S. MERS is thought to originate from bats and spread directly to humans and or camels. However, like Ebola, the precise ways the virus spreads are unknown. 1,980 cases with, well, 699 deaths, which is kind of 666, right? You invert the 99. All right. Uh, were reported in 15 countries across the world as of June 2017, caused by MERS. MERS is one of the viruses that have been engineered by the U.S. and studied by the Pentagon, as well as influenza and SARS. Confirmation of this practice is Obama's 2014 temporary ban on government funding for such dual-use research. The moratorium was lifted by Trump 2017, and experiments have continued. Enhanced potential pandemic 
pathogens experiments are legal in the US. Such experiments aim to increase the transmissibility and or virulence of pathogens. Tularemia um, as bioweapon. Tularemia, also known as rabbit fever, classified as a bioterrorist uh, bioterrorism agent. Tularemia, a man contracted tularemia from his cat. It's classified as a bioterrorism agent. Was developed in the past by the U.S. Pentagon's research on tularemia continues, as well as on possible vectors of the bacteria such as ticks and rodents. Pet rats. Hmm. Ticks. Which cause the disease. Uh, this reduction agency, Defense Threat Reduction Agency, launched a number of projects on tularemia, along with other especially dangerous pathogens in Georgia. These highly pathogenic agents have the potential to be weaponized with proof of their military importance seen through the following Pentagon projects. And, well, she's got the documents right here. So, the Department of Defense Threat Reduction Agency funded 11 bio laboratories in the former Soviet Union country, Ukraine, bordering Russia. Ukraine has no control over the military bio laboratories on its own territory. According to the 2005 agreement between the DOD and the Ministry of Health of Ukraine, the Ukrainian government is prohibited from public disclosure of sensitive information about the U.S. program, and Ukraine is obliged to transfer to the U.S. Department of Defense dangerous pathogens for biological research. Among the set of bilateral agreements between the U.S. and the Ukraine is the establishment of the Science and Technology Center in Ukraine, an international organization funded mainly by the U.S. government, which has been accorded diplomatic status. So, uh, this Science and Technology Center officially supports projects of scientists previously involved in the Soviet Biological Weapons Program. Over the past 20 years, this center has invested over $285 million in funding and managing some 1,850 projects of scientists who previously worked for the development of weapons of mass destruction. Oh, our tax dollars spent wisely. 364 Ukrainians died from the swine flu, January 2016. At least 20 Ukrainian soldiers died from flu-like viruses in just two days, with 200 more being hospitalized. And the Ukrainian government did not report on the dead Ukrainian soldiers. Well, it didn't want to violate the agreement with the United States to not discuss any sensitive or publish any sensitive information. As of March 2016, 364 deaths have been reported across Ukraine caused by H1N1 swine flu. Highly suspicious hepatitis A infection spread rapidly in just a few months across southeast Ukraine where most of the Pentagon bio labs are located. What hepatitis is it that baby boomers have to get the vaccine? Is it C, A, B? Uh, 37 people have been hospitalized for hepatitis A in the in a city of in Ukraine in January 2018. As of January 2018, local police have launched an investigation into infection with human immunodeficiency virus, and other incurable diseases. 
Three years ago, more than 100 people in the same city became infected with cholera. Both diseases are alleged to have spread through contaminated drinking water. In the summer of 2017, 60 people with hepatitis A were admitted to the hospital. Cause of this outbreak is still unknown. Odessa region, 19 children from an orphanage were hospitalized for hepatitis A in June 2017. 29 cases of hepatitis A were, were again reported in another city in November 2017. The virus was isolated in contaminated drinking water. One of the Pentagon bio labs is located in that city, which was blamed for the deadly flu outbreak a year prior in 2016, which claimed the lives of 364 Ukrainians. In 2011, Ukraine was hit by a cholera outbreak. 33 patients were reported hospitalized for severe diarrhea. A second outbreak struck the country in 2014 when more than 800 people all across Ukraine were reported to have contracted the disease in 2015. At least 100 new cases were registered. A new highly virulent um, variant of the cholera agent with a highly genetic similarity to the strains reported in Ukraine hit Moscow in 2014. Southern Research Institute, one of the U.S. contractors working at the bio laboratories in Ukraine, has projects on cholera as well as on influenza and Zika. And in my last video, mainstream media is reporting that the world the world, there's going to be a Zika outbreak. Mainstream media is also reporting, as it does uh, year after year, influenza pandemic. Oh, it's not if, it's when it's going to hit. Well, you can't convince me that this is natural. A Soviet defector produced anthrax for the Pentagon. Uh, it wasn't only the Nazis that we brought over, but you know we helped uh, scientists from the Soviet Union defect to our country, and they were obliged to continue their research. So this guy, the prime contractor being advanced biosystems, whose president was Ken Alibek, a former Soviet microbiologist and biological warfare expert from Kazakhstan. I didn't pronounce that right. I'm really having trouble, I'm sorry. Um, but he defected in 1992 and he just continued the same research in the United States bio labs, 250,000 for lobbying Jeff Sessions for research for US intelligence. Oh, good old Jeff. Mr. Moral, right? The company paid, or at Southern Research Institute, they lobbied Congress, the Department of State hard for issues related to research and development um, they gave 250000 to Jeff Sessions. 2008-2009, now he's the Attorney General. Uh, for a 10-year period, from 2006 to 2016, Southern Research Institute paid $1.28 uh, million for lobbying the U.S. Senate House of Representatives, the State Department, the Department of Defense, Jeff Sessions' aid, on Capitol Hill, Watson Donald is now a senior director at Southern Research Institute. And the case of botulism. Well, we may have unleashed botulism in the Ukraine in uh, 2016. 
2017, more cases. Eight deaths, 2017, 90 new cases with eight deaths. In 2016, in the Ukraine, 150, 115 cases, 12 deaths. One of the most poisonous biological substances known. Oh, there are no bounds for American exceptionalism. One gram of the toxin can kill as many as one people. One, one million people. Uh, it causes muscle, muscles, paralysis, respiratory failure, ultimately death if not treated immediately. A single gram, evenly dispersed and inhaled, can kill more than one million people. It could be disseminated via aerosol or by contamination of water or food supplies. Pentagon produces live viruses, bacteria, toxins, and yeah, it's true. Our military has no bounds. You can read more about the aerosolized biological agents by clicking on the link below. The Microbiology Branch of Life Sciences Division produces toxins, bacteria, viruses, and agent-like organisms which are used in chamber and field testing aerosolized biological agents. Don't think for one minute that they are not spraying us with biological agents. Documents prove that the U.S. Army produces, possesses, tests, aerosols of the most lethal toxin in the world, botulinum, lindum, neurotoxin. Uh, 2014, the Department of the Army purchased 100 milligrams. <laughs> and only one gram can kill one million. They purchased it from Meta Biologics. Experiments date back to 2007 when an unspecified quantity of the toxin was procured in the Department of the Army by the same company, Meta Biologics. According to the 2012 West Desert Test Center report, the military facility performs tests with this neurotoxin aerosol as well as with aerosolized anthrax and Yersinia pestis and Venezuelan equine encephalitis virus. U.S. Army documents and photos show that the Pentagon has developed various dissemination methods for bioterrorism attacks including by explosives Look at that. They drop a bomb, they drop explosives, and it releases aerosolized toxins. Aren't we exceptional? U.S. Army report lists numerous dissemination techniques, including by bioaerosol sprayers, such sprayers called Micronair. Disseminators, disseminators have already been developed by the U.S. Army and tested at Dugway Proving Ground, according to the documents. They can be vehicle mounted or worn as a backpack with a pump system, which can then be fitted to the unit to increase the accuracy of the release. U.S. stole bacteria from Saddam Hussein. Not a surprise at all. Lovelace Biomedical and Environmental Research Institute operates an animal biosafety three-level laboratory. The facility is designed to conduct bioaerosol studies. The company has been awarded a five-year contract for field tests with biological simulants at Kirkland Air Force Base. 
what the Pentagon is now doing is exactly what it did in the past, meaning that its bioweapons program was never terminated. The U.S. Army performed 27 field tests with such biological simulants involving the public domain from 1949 to 1968 when President Nixon officially announced the end of the program, but it was never ended. Conducting field tests in Chechnya, Chech, Chechnya, Chech, yeah, wow. Um, spring of 2017, local citizens reported a drone disseminating white powder close to the Russian border with Georgia. U.S. Defense Agency tests GM insects to transmit GM viruses, DARPA, awarded seven research teams to develop tools for genome engineering in insects, rodents, and bacteria under DARPA's safe gene program using a novel CRISPR Cas9 technology. Well, many of us have um, posted on CRISPR. They releasing these genetically modified mosquitoes. And the mainstream articles never mention DARPA. They mention these private companies that came up with this technology. But it's DARPA. DARPA is releasing genetically modified mosquitoes all over the country, Florida certainly, and um, God, other states that I know. But don't think that these things are just being released in the areas that are announced. Insects allies. Uh, genetically modified insects are engineered to transfer modified genes to plants. 10.3 million DARPA project includes both gene editing in insects and in the viruses that they transmit. So, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of strange looking insects. Besides gene editing in insects and in the viruses they transmit, Pentagon wants to engineer humans as well. DARPA. Advanced Tools for Mammalian Genome Engineering Project seeks to create a biological platform inside the human body, using it to deliver new genetic information and thus altering humans at the DNA level. DARPA wants to insert an additional 47th artificial chromosome into human cells. This chromosome will deliver new genes that will be used for engineering the human body. Top secret research on synthetic viruses. 20, uh, 2008 and 2014, the United States invested approximately $820 million in synthetic biology research, defense being a major contributor. Most of the military projects on synthetic biology are classified. Uh, and they, I reported on this to Jason, this independent scientific advisory group that provides consulting services to the U.S. government and military on matters of defense, science, and technology. Established in 1960, and most of their resulting Jason reports are classified, but a few are not. Um, and you can dig a little further if they're classified on the Jason website. Well, this journalist found the U.S. Air Force study titled Biotechnology Genetically Engineered Pathogens shed some light on what the secretive Jason group has researched. Five groups of genetically engineered pathogens that can be used as bioweapons, binary, or binary biological weapons, a lethal combination of two viruses. Think about those vaccines with four strains for the flu vaccine. That goes, that's the new flu shot. 
for uh, is it balance? Four different strains. Well, five groups of genetically engineered pathogens that can be used as bioweapons. Binary biological weapons, lethal combination of two viruses, host swapping diseases, animal viruses that jump to humans, like pet rats, and cats, and dogs. We're seeing more and more of that. Like bats. Ebola virus, stealth viruses, designer di diseases. Designer diseases can be engineered to target a certain ethnic group, meaning they can be used as ethnic bioweapons. And there's a, an awful lot of uh, there's not a lot more, but you know, tobacco vaccines, how the Pentagon helped tobacco companies to profit from Ebola. DARPA invested 100 million in vaccines production from the tobacco plants. And currently they are producing flu and Ebola vaccines from tobacco plants. Uh, And it contracts out to other companies to get doses of an influenza vaccine and Ebola vaccines. Why is DARPA investing in this? Isn't that the CDC's responsibility? But the U.S. also had been collecting biological material from both healthy and cancer patients in China and Russians. They collected RNA and synovial tissue samples, synovial tissue samples, raising fears in Moscow of a covert U.S. ethnic bioweapons program. Why do you think it's collecting all of our data, medical records. Well, yeah, long video, uh, long article. Well, what can you say? Our U.S. military, Pentagon, they've been on it for a long time. And nothing stops this government, this military, nothing. Nothing at all. Biological experiments are war crimes? <laughs> what does it matter to the United States? What has it ever mattered to the United States? What has it ever mattered from the start of our country? Just betray agreements made break contracts who the care who you know it doesn't matter and what did we do when we got here you know those uh, lovely uh, colonists what did we do we spread disease to the native population well, if you can't get your evil stopped, then it really spreads like a virus. Fever. You know, it's... Uh... No, I'm sorry. The only thing exceptional about this country has been how evil it really has been and how deluded the ordinary American has been living as an American.
the links are below.